Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today you have joined me on a very grey rainy day in London but we are doing part two of the Looking Around London Universities series on my channel. So we are just about to get to Imperial College London and I will talk to you about that when we get there. London is one of the most prestigious universities here in the UK and it focuses exclusively on science, technology, medicine and business. Imperial's main campus is located here in South Kensington alongside the Science Museum, the Natural History Museum and the Royal Albert Hall. Imperial has teaching hospitals throughout central London. We are now inside Imperial College um, and we might have snuck in. I'm not entirely sure we're meant to be here. We just walked past the security box. So I'm just going to do this very, very quickly. Now, you might be wondering why the Imperial College London logo does not include the University of London logo. And that is because it actually became independent from the University of London group on its centenary in 2007. Like LSE and UCL, Imperial has a large percentage of students coming from overseas, with 59% of students being international and over 140 different national nationalities represented here on campus. Imperial has four main faculties, the Imperial College Business School, the Faculty of Engineering um, and the Faculty of Medicine and Natural Sciences. We've been chased out by security but I think we're making our way out of uh, Imperial's campus so we can film a little bit more. Imperial is ranked 11th globally as well as third in the UK after Oxford and Cambridge. It has one of the highest grade requirements in the UK requiring A star, A star, A for many of its courses. Imperial College London has approximately 20,000 students, with 11,000 of those being undergraduates and 9,000 postgraduates. Interestingly, it has a male to female ratio of 64 to 36, with some engineering courses having a male to female ratio of 5 to 1. However, medicine does have a 1 to 1 male to female ratio, so I guess that's a good thing. The Queen's Tower, which you can see behind me, nicely covered in scaffolding because we are filming this in the middle of summer, sits at the heart of the campus in South Kensington. The campus has many libraries, including the Central Library, which is located next to the Queen's Lawn, which is just over here, as well as many cafes and restaurants run by the college. campus also contains some of the student accommodation such as Prince's Garden Halls and Bite Hall. Bite Hall is home to the College Union which runs some student pubs, uh, a nightclub and a cinema on the site. To the north of the campus lies Kensington Gardens and Hyde Park which provide green spaces for students and are also home to the Lawn Tennis Club at Imperial College. According to both the 2019 Guardian University Guide and the Complete University Guide, students at Imperial College London are ranked first for employment prospects out of all universities here in the UK. The computer science course here at Imperial College London was ranked the highest paying degree six months after graduation out of all of the courses here in the UK. As well as these three notable alumni, Sir Alexander Fleming, Queen guitarist Brian May, Lord Robert Winston and HG Wells all attended Imperial College London at some point. After a short journey across London, we have made our way to Angel, which is the location for City University of London. City University of London is ranked in the top 400 universities globally and is 45th in the UK. City University of London was established here in 1894. However, it is not the only site of the university here in London. It was also in Camden and in Smithfield. Like Imperial, it has 20,000 students, with 11,000 of those being undergraduates and 9,000 of those being postgraduates. Almost all undergraduate courses at City have the opportunity to do either a work or a clinical placement. City University of London is organised into five different schools. The City Law School, School of Health Sciences, School of Arts and Social Science, including the prestigious Department of Journalism, School of Mathematics, Computer Science and Engineering, and finally, the Business School. City University of London has an outstanding reputation for journalism and has a number of notable alumni. Samira Ahmed, Channel 4 News, Sophie Rayworth, BBC News, Donald McIntyre, investigative journalist, and Lucrezia Millerini, ITN News, 
as well as Dermot Manahan from Sky News, all studied at City. The City Law School offers courses for undergraduates, postgraduates and professional courses, leading to qualification as a professional solicitor or barrister. The Legal Practice course or LPC that is offered at City Law School has the highest quality rating from the Solicitors Regulation Authority. The Inns of Court Law School is now part of City Law School and it has many notable alumni including Gandhi, Margaret Thatcher, Clement Attlee and Tony Blair. Following a donation from the Sir John Cast Foundation, this multi-million pound building which you can see behind me was built as the prestigious Cast Business School. We are currently slightly away from City University of London and this building is actually to be renamed after John Cass's involvement in the Atlantic slave trade. From September 2021, this building will in fact be known as the Bayes Business School. New College of Humanities is one of the newest higher education institutes in the UK. As you can see behind me, this doesn't actually look like one of the buildings, and that is because previously New College of Humanities was based in central London, but it is now moving to out here in St Catherine's Dock. New College of Humanities was originally based in Bedford Square in Bloomsbury, however the new campus out here at Devon House is going to be 19 times the size. The college was founded in 2010 and first started teaching undergraduate programmes in 2012. The college was founded by A.C. Grayling. Grayling said that he had the idea for the college years ago when he was an Oxbridge admissions tutor and for every 12 candidates that he saw who were really, really good, he was only accepting one of them and 11 really good applicants were going to waste. Boris Johnson, the then Mayor of London, said that it was one of the boldest experiments in higher education since the foundation of the University of Buckingham, which was the first private university. New College of the Humanities is owned by North Eastern University, which is based in Boston, Massachusetts. As the name suggests, the college focuses on humanities and it prides itself in combining the tutorial system of Oxford and Cambridge along with the liberal arts system of the US. In September 2021, the students at New College of Humanities will also have access to all of the University of London buildings such as Senate House. Its annual fees for home students are still £9,250 a year and student finance is available for all courses taught at New College. The college also guarantees accommodation for its first year students by block booking um, areas of student accommodation with the student accommodation providers. The college offers tuition for 56 undergraduate programmes with major and minor options in art history, creative writing, data science, English, philosophy, philosophy, politics, IR and psychology. As a new university, it only has 300 students, 270 of which are undergraduates and 30 postgraduates. Therefore, it doesn't have any notable alumni yet. For this reason, it also doesn't have a university ranking. The new location for New College of Humanities will boast unrivaled views of the River Thames as well as Tower Bridge, which you can see just over there behind me. And the new location is actually just around the corner, but unfortunately we couldn't get any closer to the water. After a short walk across London with a little bit of rain, we have arrived at Queen Mary University of London. Queen Mary University was originally called Queen Mary College and it was named after Mary of Tech and became part of the University of London group in 1915. Queen Mary has five campuses across East and Central London, one in Mile End, which is the one that we're at now, one in Whitechapel, one at Charterhouse Square, one at Lincoln's Inn Fields, which we saw in the last video, and one at West Smithfield. As well as this, it has an international presence in China, Greece, Malta and France. Queen Mary is ranked 110th in the world and 13th in the UK. The university has around 27,000 students, which is 19,000 undergraduates and 8,000 postgraduate students. Queen Mary University of London is one of the most diverse universities of the world, with over 90% of home students coming from state schools and over 50% of home students being the first in their family to go to university. And at Queen Mary, over 65% of students are from ethnic minority backgrounds. The Mile End campus is the largest of any Russell Group London-based university. The university is made up of three faculties, the first one being Humanities and Social Sciences, the second one being Science and Engineering, and the final faculty out of the three is Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry. Notable alumni of Queen Mary University of London include nine Nobel Prize winners, including Sir Ronald Ross, who is on the board here, who um, discovered the cure and origin of malaria. 
As well as this, Davidson Nicol also studied here and he discovered the breakdown of insulin within the human body. British politician Peter Hayne and Professor Andrew Pollard also studied here and Professor Andrew Pollard was actually the chief investigator of the uh, AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. BBC presenter Jane Hill and Arthur Wint MBE also studied at Queen Mary and Arthur Wint was the person who won Jamaica's first gold medal at the 1948 London Olympics. And that is the end of today's video. We have finished our little tour of Queen Mary and the other three universities. As ever, I really hope you found this video useful. And if you have, do give it a massive thumbs up because it really does help me out. And subscribe to my channel down below to see more London University content.